This video is about identities involving trig functions, like sine and cosine. But I want to start with some examples that just involve quadratic functions. If I want to find the solutions to this equation, I can rewrite it, x squared minus 6x minus 7 equals 0, factor it, x minus 7 times x plus 1 equals 0, set the factors equal to 0, x minus 7 equals 0, or x plus 1 equals 0, and that gives me the solutions x equals 7 or x equals negative 1. Next, let's look at this more complicated equation. I'm going to try to solve that for x by multiplying out the right-hand side. Next, I'll combine terms on the right-hand side. So that gives me x squared minus 6x on both sides. Well, x squared minus 6x is equal to x squared minus 6x. That's true no matter what I plug in for x. And therefore, all values of x satisfy this equation. We can say that the solution set is all real numbers. This second equation is called an identity because it holds for all values of the variable. The first equation, on the other hand, is not an identity because it only holds for some values of x and not all values. Please pause the video for a moment and try to decide which of the following three equations are identities. That is, which of these equations hold for all values of the variable. To start out, you might want to test them by plugging in a few values of the variable and see if the equation holds. The first equation is not an identity. It does hold for some values of x, for example, if x equals 0, then sine of 2 times 0 is 0, and 2 times sine of 0 is also 0, so it does hold when x is 0. However, when x is, say, pi over 2, then sine of 2 times pi over 2, that's the same thing as sine of pi, which is 0, but 2 times sine of pi over 2, that's 2 times 1, or 2, and 0 is not equal to 2, so the equation does not hold for x equals pi over 2. Since it doesn't hold for all values of the variable, it's not an identity. The second equation is an identity. You can build some evidence for this by plugging in numbers. For example, cosine of 0 plus pi which is negative 1, is the same thing as negative of cosine of 0. You can also check, for example, that cosine of pi over 6 plus pi is the same thing as negative cosine of pi over 6. But even if we check a zillion examples, that's just evidence. It's not a proof that the identity holds. We could have just gotten lucky with the values we picked. We can build a little bit stronger evidence by looking at graphs. I'm going to put theta on the x-axis, and if I graph y equals cosine of theta plus pi, that's just like the graph of cosine shifted over to the left by pi. On the other hand, if I graph y equals negative cosine theta, that's the graph of cosine theta reflected across the x-axis, which gives us the exact same graph. So graphing both sides gives us strong evidence that this equation is an identity. It holds for all values of theta. Now the strongest evidence of all would be an algebraic proof, which we'll do later in the course once we have a formula for the cosine of a sum of two angles. In the meantime, let's look at equation C. It turns out equation C is an identity. And we could build evidence for it again by plugging in values for x or by graphing the left side and the right side separately and checking to see that the graphs coincided. But for this example, I'm going to go ahead and do an algebraic verification. In particular, I'm going to start with the left side of the equation and rewrite things and rewrite things until I get to the right side of the equation. The first thing I'll rewrite is secant 
and tangent in terms of their constituent functions, sine and cosine. Since secant of x is 1 over cosine x and tangent of x is sine x over cosine x, I can rewrite this expression as 1 over cosine x minus sine x times sine x over cosine x. I can clean up those fractions and write this as 1 over cosine x minus sine squared x over cosine x. Now I notice that I have two fractions with the same denominator. So I can pull them together as 1 minus sine squared x over cosine x. Next, I'm going to rewrite the numerator 1 minus sine squared x using the Pythagorean identity that says that cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. And therefore, 1 minus sine squared x is equal to cosine squared x just by subtracting sine squared x from both sides. So I can replace my numerator, 1 minus sine squared x, with cosine squared x. And canceling one cosine from the top and from the bottom, that's the same thing as cosine of x, which is the right-hand side that I was trying to get to. So a combination of a bunch of algebra and the Pythagorean identity allows me to prove that this equation is true for all values of x. It's an identity. The best way to prove that an equation is an identity is to use algebra and to use other identities, like the Pythagorean identity, to rewrite one side of the equation till it looks like the other side. The best way to prove that an equation is not an identity is to plug in numbers that break the identity, that is, make the equation not true. Now, if you're just trying to decide if an equation is an identity or not, and not worried about proving it, then I recommend plugging in numbers or graphing the left and right sides to see if those graphs are the same.